challenge we have now is we have accessibility to so much information. And if we think of devices like the iPhone and things like that, in which we which engage, you know, the screen engages so much of our life. Sherry Turkle, who's a researcher at MIT, says there are three very powerful fantasies that these technologies are now bringing to us. One, that we will always be heard. Two, that we can choose whatever we pay attention to. And three, we will never have to be alone. When the actual result of these technologies is that they destroy solitude, but don't necessarily create connection. The world created by Google, Facebook, etc., could move in the direction of people never leaving their own worlds because they're being fed results that conform to their, expect, uh, their search interests and so forth. They only con communicate with each other asynchronously, through tweeting or text message or so forth. Uh, they have no solitude because they're constantly engaged, but they don't actually experience real connection, and they lose their ability to have conversations. This reflects our cosmology of isolated orbs in space, in infinite space, which only, can only uh, communicate, if at all, asynchronously because of the limitations of the speed of light. What do you do here? Joseph Campbell once said, follow your bliss. I disagree. The way out of this is follow awe. Because the one thing that's clear to me is that modern culture has systematically destroyed our relationship with awe. Awe is a very, very important emotion. And through the presence of awe, it takes you out of your world into a sense of something that's greater than you in and to which you feel intimately connected. Something greater than you to which you feel intimately connected. So if you want to keep a guiding principle which will steer you in this world of new technologies, this is what I would suggest. Follow your awe. Thank you.